update on uh, some developments with uh, the Jeep. So uh, I watched a video, I think Saturday night after I got home, um, might have been yesterday, Sunday, uh, put on by Matt at Bleepin' Jeep about the nine things to check when you have coolant problems. I think it was nine. And in his whole list, like eight of the nine things he mentioned are components that I have replaced or checked out. So it comes down to, as we were thinking, Joe and I, it's a problem with airflow. Now something Matt said in the video that I found very interesting is that the uh, mechanical fan, the clutch, should get it to spin faster as your heat builds up in your engine bay. And I thought, well, I've been in and out of the cab during all the testing, but I haven't perceived any change in the mechanical fan, which I imagine would be accompanied with an increase in pitch, a higher pitch, and just overall sound as there's more air traveling. So I texted Joe and asked him if he had noticed anything, and he called me back from work and said, um, I, I was concentrating on the electric fan, but no, I really don't think that, uh, that anything is happening. And that collaborates our suspicion of airflow problems. Um, not only do I need to get the electric fan to just work in general, um, the way it's supposed to off of a switch, but, uh, my mechanical fan apparently is not working up to par itself. So I ordered a new OE clutch. I opted to not go with the ZJ upgrade that a lot of people are doing um, for several reasons. I'm just going to stay OE for now. All right, so happy update. Um, you can hear, I think probably, the uh, Jeep running behind me. It has been running for an hour, um, probably about an hour and 15 minutes really, because I started the timer 10 to 15 minutes late, because uh, I just didn't think about it in time. Um, my temperature is generally holding. Um, if I just let it sit and idle, it will creep up to about 225 maybe. Um, and to that end, I still have a slight problem in that the electric fan is still not kicking on. But the new fan clutch on the mechanical fan seems to be doing its job. If I give it some gas, um, well, let me just show you what happens. All right, so we're in the cab here. You can see I'm a little over 210. Um, yeah, right around 220, I would say, 222 something. Don't need to be pedantic about it but notice uh, if I put the uh, give it some gas I'm gonna go up to 1500 rpm and watch that temperature gauge yeah about 20 to 30 seconds I'm back down to optimal running temperature so, what does that mean? So, what that uh, tells me is that I think this is safe to pretty much uh, drive around, take a few uh, little trips. Um, what I want to do is get about two tanks of gas through it. Um, I've got some, a bottle of coolant flush in the cooling system. Uh, so. I want to do that. I also want to get some, uh, I picked up some sea foam, specific high mileage sea foam um, to clean out the fuel system. So uh, I want to put a bottle of that through once I can get this to a gas station and get it topped off. So uh, where I'm at right now is I'm comfortable starting to drive it around a bit and uh, possibly on a camping trip next weekend 
be a good little test for it. And uh, yeah, it's starting to come together. It's gonna start to get usable here real quick. So while it was running, uh, the water line, you can clearly see, was about right there. But I just took the cap off and relieved some pressure and it went up. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, see the level's about right there, so across the board. So that's kind of the stain that it's put on and uh, that's what the fluid looks like. Yeah, it's uh, very brown. Not the nice lemon lime color that it started. Okay, I probably should have videoed this last night. I didn't even think about it, but when I got home from doing my test drive, which had gone reasonably well, um, I parked the Jeep and went to walk inside and I heard an interesting noise, which I thought was the raccoons over at the dumpster that are off in there. So I looked over and I realized that the sound was coming from the Jeep. And as I walked back over to it, um, there was steam coming out of this corner right here where the coolant uh, pressure reserve tank is. Um, so I opened the hood and there was uh, fluid leaking out of the tank. Um, it left um, not too bad a spot, but that's patch right there is ultimately how much came out. Um, pretty much the contents of the, of the tank. Um, <clears throat> And so, yeah, obviously there was a problem. Um, let me flip the camera around and show you what I'm looking at here. So this is the bottom side of the tank and you can see that it cracked right here below the seam um, from the pressure. <clears throat> and that's where all of it was leaking out. So most of the fluid uh, ended up coming out of it. So when um, I did the idle test a couple days ago, um, which uh, it ran for approximately an hour and got um, mostly stayed around about 220 in uh, the temp. Um, <clears throat> I did notice that the tank was starting to kind of balloon and expand out. Um, <clears throat> I don't know a lot about this type of coolant system, so I didn't think much of it. I did turn the cap just a little bit and relieve some of that pressure. But uh, anyway, I didn't really think anything of it because I figured that's what it's supposed to do. That's what it's made for. And um, also that I have this uh, rubber strap is what keeps it in. I thought, oh, well, that makes sense why that's rubber because then that tank can expand. So some things about it just kind of made sense to me. So anyway, last night I go out and take my drive. Obviously, um, when I got to it, it was still fairly ballooned out and deformed. Um, and obviously the amount of pressure that was in there was just too much. I got online last night and looked at, um, checked a couple of forums trying to find out what would cause overpressurization. Some people were blaming water pumps. Some people were blaming uh, head gasket issues, uh, warpage. Um, anyway, there's a lot of stuff going. But ultimately, I got online and I was able to find a spare um, tank at AutoZone. And this one, um, unlike the other one that I got off of eBay, this one is an identical match the, to the original one that I pulled out. Um, there are a couple of things that um, are a little bit different. And let me um, turn this off and set these up and kind of go over some of them. All right, so the, this tank, the, the cracked one, um, still has a little bit of fluid in, so I'm not going to turn it over. But first thing you notice is inside the tank here, there is uh, that post. Um, apparently that is just there to be a, an indicator of how full to fill the, uh, the tank and kind of give you a fluid level. This tank doesn't have that. It should be right there. You can see on the bottom of this new one where that is attached. This one doesn't have that. So that is the first thing. The next thing is the cap. 
So this is the cap off of the new one. Does look like it has a valve in there. Um, the rest of the cap is solid, so I don't know like where that valve is gonna release anything to, but um, does seem like there is one there. Let me show you the cap off of, uh, off of this one. Let me set this down just a second. All right, so this is the cap off of my new one. Now it does look like it has something intending to be a valve there, but I can't really see anything inside it. And um, yeah, this cap just doesn't have, um, well, the tanks in general, as far as their weight and kind of the, how robust they feel in the hand, uh, this one that I got from AutoZone is definitely heavier. Feels like the plastic um, has some quite a bit more thickness to it. So, and uh, you can clearly see kind of the size difference in the um, in the caps themselves. Again, I don't know how the pressure um, relief would work in either one because the outsides do seem like they're solid. So I don't know where the pressure is supposed to go. But uh, yeah, that's my initial impression of the two. This one seems to match the OE. Um, this one has a couple of differences. Um, I can't blame it on being made in China or something like that because this one is stamped right there that it is made in China. So um, <clears throat> it's not as simple as that. So anyway, that's where I'm at. Um, so I'm gonna get this, this one put in now and everything hooked back up and get a little bit of fluid back in and then run it a bit and see what happens if this guy bubbles up. Okay, another quick observation. So the Haynes manual I got indicates that you fill it up according to uh, the post that I've already showed you that's on the inside. But I've just noticed, it's kind of hard to see, but uh, there is an outside marking right here. That one says max. There's another one. I think I saw down here at the bottom, hard to see underneath there. It might not be there, it might be my imagination. Um, nope, I don't think there is anything there. So never mind that. But there is a max fill level line right there, which is very helpful. All right, so I drove it around for about a two mile loop. Um, got it warmed up, came back and checked it. Everything seemed normal. Um, tank had a little bit of pressure in it, but wasn't deformed. But then I just took it around uh, several miles. It's been holding temperature at about 205, uh, just under 210. And uh, now it's been uh, probably a good 20 minutes or so. Let's see what our tank looks like. Okay, so. I am seeing a little bit of swelling, but all in all, compared to that other tank, this is significantly improved. Uh, looks like I need to top off the coolant a little bit, but um, yeah, we're doing good. So far, so good. Fingers crossed. Knock on wood. Okay. Um, since I have no air conditioning, I've got some windows open for some ventilation, so it might be a little noisy. Just bear with me. Um, I just went and picked up a couple of things, and now I'm headed down to my buddy Joe's. I called him, asked him a question about uh, the coolant. Uh, I've got that flush cleaner stuff in it. I asked him, do I just drain it or do I need to flush the system with water? He said, you know, you really should flush it with water. It's like, well, it's kind of a, kind of an issue because I don't really have any outside running water. I don't have a, a hose. The one I do have, I have a faucet in my garage, but it's buried behind some boxes and stuff. And I don't know that I even have a hose. And he was like, Come down and do it at my house. And I thought about it for a brief second. I thought, you know what? There's a couple of things that I could do heading down to his house this afternoon. And he's like, yeah, you can do that. 
I'll clean your uh, the carpet and your cargo area, which is the last spot we need to hit. And I said, hey, I need some help putting my new lift gate on, just somebody to hold while I get the screws in. Um, so anyway, there's four or five things I think that we can get done in a couple of hours down there. So I am uh, on the road down to his house, just hit the highway. Uh, take me about an hour to get down there. All right, well, here's the uh, end of day report. It's about 5 a.m. I just walked in the door. Um, I got down to uh, Joe's place about 5 p.m. Um, as has been the trend with the Jeep, uh, it was two steps forward, one step back. So we got... Um, the oil changed with the new oil filter that went fine got the coolant drained with the cleaner stuff in it um, flushed the system with some fresh water and then filled it with antifreeze and um, also some purple royal purple ice which is supposed to help it run a little bit cooler um, it only took uh, just under two gallons a worth of uh, coolant mix, uh, which surprised me a little bit because uh, last time we filled it up, it took about three, about two and a half, three. So um, anyway, but my temperature on the way home stayed fine, um, about 205 or so, which is right where it should be. So that seems to be running... Uh, running just fine we also got the there i had a leak around the thermostat housing and joe actually took that off while i ran to o'reilly's to get a new gasket and um, he said that the bolts were barely in there uh, were not very tight and uh, we determined that the bolts were probably bottoming out and not really cinching the uh the housing down to the um, to the manifold uh, to, or the head, uh, whatever it is uh, that it attaches to on the engine block. So uh, we ended up putting some washers in. The bottom one is really, really close to the serpentine belt with the washer on it, but it doesn't appear to be rubbing. Um, the, the belt's not showing any signs of any issues, but it is, it is awfully close down there. But, um, and just to tell you why we did that, I left the, I left the washer off. We put it on, started it. It started leaking even worse than before. And so, uh, we put a washer on the only one that Joe had that fit was a lock washer, um, but I got it on there and cinched it and uh, no leaking. So that seems to have solved that. So my coolant system should now be good to go for quite a while. Everything seems to be functioning well on that. Okay, so this is mainly for my buddy Joe to see, but uh, might help other people along the way. So this was this gasket was sticky on one side, so uh, I didn't use any gasket uh, stuff on it, and that is pretty obviously where it failed, as you can see that separation there. So, yep. All right. I don't know how often, how long this has been the case, but. I have just solved why my thermostat housing keeps leaking. You can see right there, it is cracked. And now that I know that, if you turn it this way, maybe hard to see, but you can see how that corner, this one right here, is slightly elevated. It's no longer flat. This thermostat housing is toast. So just as a means of documentation, um, one of my clues to really look over the thermostat housing was you can see how this is all dried up here. 
but it's all wet down here. And it was wet kind of this bottom third or so, which told me something was leaking and, and this was on here really quite tight. Like I had to use a dead blow uh, mallet to get the housing off. So I knew there was a good seal on a large portion of this. So when I saw that that was wet, that gave me a clue that there was something wrong. That's when I looked at the housing and found that crack. So, um, but yeah, this observation is what led to it. So I'm gonna finish cleaning this gasket off. I've got a new housing um, online order down at AutoZone. I'll go pick it up and see if we can get this buttoned up once and for all. All right, test drive with the newly fixed thermostat housing doesn't look like it's leaking so far so uh, just taking it out for a spin got my nephew Caden first extended family in the, in the Jeep first family member in the Jeep so he can verify that it runs it drives it drives and stops <laughs> which it should because I do have all new brakes on the whole thing so uh, yep, we're just gonna go out for a little jaunt here, and then we'll get back. All right, so we're coming down the last canyon here. Caden has the honor of being the first person to drive the Jeep. Caden, what are your thoughts? Well, as the honorary VIP, I just can say that it's a mob machine. And it's gonna be something great. It is something great. We're gonna make it huge. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> yeah, so I just had a nice little trip up to Kazi Reservoir. Great colors. You can see. And uh, yellow spreads. Yep, a little bit of everything. Temperature stayed steady. Electric fan doesn't seem like it was working. I swapped it yesterday with another one. So a uh, little investigation to do on that. But Seems to be driving all right. I'll check for the coolant leak when I get home. Peace out. All right, so update on the Jeep. It's been a little while. Um, so the cooling issues have been doing actually quite well. It's holding its temperature um, just fine. I've taken it on one uh, lengthy weekend trip and it, uh, it did great. It's a beautiful afternoon. It is April 1st, 2021. It's been about six months since that last update and I wanted to close the series out by telling you where things are. I took the Jeep on the camping trip that was mentioned and it worked pretty well. A surprising thing happened is that the electric fan just all of a sudden started working. I haven't had any problems with the temperature uh, in the last couple of months that I've been using it. So I don't know if the electric fan hasn't needed to kick on, but it doesn't seem like it's been kicking on very regularly. Uh, but again, my temperature has been staying pretty steady around the 210 that it's supposed to run at. Uh, the thermostat hasn't been leaking. Everything else seems like it's working just fine. As far as just driving it on the road, it seems like it's totally up to doing that and is reliable. Now that I've got the suspension dialed in, I can start taking it off-road and put it through some more trials. So that'll be the next series of tests and the suspension videos, you can look for those uh, up and coming. Thanks for watching.